Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another week in Downshift Racing. This is the week of May 14th up through May 20th. And for today, we're in Magnum Star Signature Series, the All-American Classic. No ABS, no traction control, no assist whatsoever. And straight away, ring goes straight into the wall. <laughs> so not a great... Not a great start, but uh, to begin, uh, this was an interesting week because we actually did, as you can see, uh, get a couple of normally people who aren't participants part of the Tuesday races. They actually were able to join us for this one, which would have been Omar, Ring, and Nana, so it was great to have them all. Um, but because of that, it was really interesting because last time I raced my 429, it was on Watkins Glen, and it just went. It was, it felt one with the car. It just worked perfectly. There were no issues. Like, there's very little oversteered, very little understeer. When I asked it to go in a direction, it went, and it didn't have any really fight at all. But this one was a little bit different. It just, nothing felt right. I, I don't know what it was, but it just, you could feel that something wasn't right. Like, the oversteer was always a little bit too much. The understeer was a little bit too much. And originally, it was really bad. But um, right after qualifying, or right during qualifying, I was able to adjust the rear and actual frequency a little bit to actually loosen it up. And it seemed to help quite a bit, because before, it was just completely undrivable. So that was kind of what I was working with. So I was working in a better progression you know i was i was working towards the direction of making it better and it you know as the race went on it wasn't too bad but just throughout the race i had some really odd mistakes like i would just go wide randomly or like i would just fall off the track or i just have these random snaps of oversteer it was just really uncharacteristic so i think it was part of that part of that deal that I was still attempting to tune it and it wasn't just quite there and I was still trying to wrangle with it a little bit and for a good portion of the race I was within eyesight of Magnum and Omar and Flanders it was just watching the three of them from afar duke it out battle it out I was sitting there going man I would really be, like to be a part of that and then I'd have the mistake where I'd you know be out of contention and have to drive back up to the group I think my car was fast enough in straight line that I was able to finally catch up to the group a couple of times, and there were a couple of great fights in there. But again, just I kept on having these mistakes. It was just it, they just kept creeping in, and just wasn't working for me. So I think Omar was kind of dealing with the same thing. I don't know if he had actually chosen his car previously, but uh, he was working with the Ford GT40, and man. When he kept that thing on the track, it just took off. And that happened a couple of times where it was during this fight amongst Flanders and Omar and myself and Magnum Star. It was just, there was all sorts of chaos and then Omar would fall off. But then he would just shoot off in the distance and finally he made it stick. Or he just put a massive gap between us. So then it was mainly just Flanders, myself, and uh, Magnum Star for a good portion of that. But then it was interesting. Uh, Flanders also, uncharacteristically, had a lot of mistakes. And that opened up a very unique opportunity for this. I'll actually just let this one play out because it was just epic. Come on, <laughs> I'm not blocking you, Flanders. I ain't I I'm not letting you buy it. Give me a goddamn <laughs> penalty. On. Yeah, you f. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you forget where your brake pedal was there? Why? No. No, it was in your bumper. I'm going to take this uh. lapped. I love it. I love it. I love it. No, 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 no. Yeah. I got to get ahead of you, though. I guess I, I got to go in the for the last lap, right? The only thing you got to do is f stay back there. No. <laughs> no. God, Three and a half. Flanders. I just God, knew Flanders for the worse. That's all. Uh, don't you? Ah, oh, damn it! Well, he's got a half second. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Uh, 
coming to the line. Don't need Let's him getting any points. No points. What? No points. No. Come on. You and I are in a goddamn battle. Me? Not in this like fight. Final Fantasy? You remember Final, Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy? <laughs> yeah. You and Westby are <laughs> battling, aren't you? No. <sighs> no. Me and you. So you come out in front of me and decide to break. I call that a break. Oh, yeah. Break. I, I call it goddamn go. education. I'm a goddamn cobra. Oh, my fingers hurt. <laughs> Still here. You're using you up. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that was on you. God yeah. damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> that was a really good battle. And finally, the fight for fourth was over, and somehow it was me. I really don't feel like I deserve that at all. But that last battle was absolutely spectacular. Shio had texted me after the fact and goes, You know, man, nobody blocks Flander the way that you did. Everybody just kind of sees him coming and moves out of the way for him. You were just on it. And when I was thinking about it, going back in my head, thinking about the mindset, you know, the first couple of laps, I was very conservative, trying to leave people with a lot of room so they can work around me and all the rest of it. When it came to that last lap, adrenaline had kicked in. And I was sitting there going, there is no way in hell this guy is getting by me. So I played every dirty trick I could think think of out of the book that I could to keep him behind me and that last corner I feel like I was the one that caused that everybody who told me after the fact was like hey man he got on the power way too early and they just spun out which actually left the door open for Magnum to hit fifth place it was a rather really eventful Tuesday race and I'm quite glad because it was it was, like I said in the previous video, every single day is a brand new learning experience. And this one was, try to tune the car not just once, but try to tune it for every course. Which sucks, because I don't know how to tune cars. So, the Thursday race is, of course, our brand new Group B series. But uh, this Thursday was a little bit interesting, because unlike their, no, most Thursdays, we normally have a pretty decent sized group, but uh, this one was pretty small. So uh, one thing that did carry over from the Protoon cars was the fact that reverse grid is, of course, the start. So in this case, I'd qualified poorly. And again, everybody else has got their rally cars or Group E cars just absolutely tuned and just working, running like a well-oiled machine, and I'm still trying to figure it out. So. This was actually interesting because I figured very quickly that they would pass me. But for a solid couple laps, I was just hanging out in front. And I was holding my own and I was actually quite surprised. And it was interesting because as the conversations go, I had to jinx myself. Now, I was about to say some like, I hope you enjoy getting used to the set of my taillights because you're used to it from last race. <laughs> yeah, fighting words, I know, fighting words. I know, because I said I'm going to f*** up, so yeah, don't worry about it. So getting a little bit cocky over uh, the Tuesday race, I was slandering Flanders a little bit. And, would you know, this happens. <sighs> oh, God! Yep, I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> That's a spin oh, out. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, wow. You lucky Flanders. What? Run me over. I don't care. No, 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 no. Unsafe. Sorry. That was an unsafe entry. I do apologize. Yeah, we're good. Oh, I picked up a penalty off of that. I had to went too far over. Okay, come on. Put myself back together here. So at that point, that was the beginning of where my problems started. Because at that point, my race was pretty much unrecoverable. I had gotten such a large gap to Flanders that there is no way to be able to recover. I tried my best. I tried my absolute best to keep it on the road, but I, because I was trying to go faster and faster and faster than what my limits were capable of, 
I kept on having these really weird mistakes where I'd fall off the course. And I don't know if it was... This is something I could say was fortunate or not, but uh, it sounded like Magnum Star kind of had a little bit of a similar situation where some really odd mistakes, some really odd situations where he too would also fall off the course. And, and the two of us were completely out of contention, which was rough because we were doing pretty well. We were feeling pretty competitive. So yeah, it was just weird to see. It was like a light switch all of a sudden where all my talent, all my pace, everything that I had built up to that moment just completely got flipped off. Uh, what little talent or pace I had to begin with, but it was just weird to have that, that very sudden point where everything changed. So yeah, it was a, a very weird race. So after that, I had gotten a message from Flanders who... If you notice with our Thursday race, Shio was not there. He had some other plans. But Flanders had said, hey, I've got an idea. You and me, let's let's use an RX-7 with the Mazda 787B engine swap for Sunday. To see if we can completely destroy Shio. And I'm sitting there going, okay. I, I see what's going on here. So we had... Uh, did a couple of practice runs. I tuned up the car. I probably spent, oh, with the engine swap, something like more than 2 million credits to get this car up and running. And shortly after that, I got a message from Shio saying, hey, we should run Subaru Group B road cars and completely destroy Flanders. I'm like, oh, man. So I tuned up the Subaru Group B road car, did a couple laps on the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit, and started to feel pretty comfortable with it. There was a voice in the back of my head that said, you know, you should really just choose the third car and completely annihilate the two of them. And I said, nah, I like, I like how this Group B road car feels. It was going immensely faster than uh, the RX-7. And I was thinking, that, so the strategy was a no stop with the RX-7 or a one stop with the Group B road car. And... The pace difference was night and day. I was doing like two tens, two elevens with the RX-7. I was doing like two oh sevens, two oh sixes consistently with the Group B road car. So I was like, well, even if I do a single pit stop, I'll still be miles ahead of the RX-7. So I went with Shio strategy and qualified second, just behind Shio for the Sunday race. Now, this one was agitating because qualifying was actually a little bit longer than expected because we were trying to get Flanders' internet connection working and to avail uh, nothing. And so, unfortunately, he was not able to join us. But in his place, we actually have a new uh, individual part of the league, uh, Berserker J, who also is on TikTok, much like a lot of uh, all other of us. So make sure to check him out. But the thing that really agitated me was that no matter what I did during qualifying, I could not beat Shio's time. I was always two-tenths of a second down consistently. And it's like every line that I'd taken differently would produce the same time, and I just couldn't beat it. So at this race, I figured it was going to be like a couple of weeks ago where myself and him would be leading against the rest of the group and that was kind of the case and we had the exact same strategy we would you know just get ahead we would pit on lap six into lap seven for fuel and tires and again that's what we did but you know the first stint was very misleading because i was very close to him the entire time and then on the second stint at lap seven he unlocked some more pace somehow my tires could not get heated up fast enough i think that's might have what well, could have been it is that he might have not changed tires because he just kept on taking off into the distance and before i might have been losing a tenth or two as lap but at this point it was like half a second lap and it was really disheartening because it was just i was seeing that win fade away the more laps it went on seeing the gap widen up and in the back of my head it said it's not over until it's over he could have a mistake he could have an accident 
but I knew that he was just too consistent. So at the end of it, I guess I was being misled by his qualifying performance. Because I was hoping that I'd be just two tenths off, but then when he noticed his fastest lap, I was actually seven tenths off. So he did send me part of the tune, where it was mainly regarding the suspension and the tires and that kind of stuff. But I feel like that the transmission was a little bit different. I felt like that the acceleration he had off the line was completely different than mine. It just he was doing something a little bit different that I had not caught up to. But I had noticed that uh, he was burning through fuel a lot faster than I was. So I wonder if there is something to do with that where he had more ballasts and had less of a power restrictor on. Who knows? So then the week is over. We had done the All American Classic Tuesday race. We had done the Thursday race of Group B, and then we had done the. 600 PowerPoint front engine only Sunday race and an odd week for me definitely because there are, I had put I can't tell you how many times in time trial I had figured out you know just going for it with the Subaru Group B road car and I felt very confident and the tune just felt great and then it just it didn't materialize. The pace just wasn't there. So like I've said before and I'll say countless times, you know, every single week with these guys is a learning experience. So my learning experience this week is to not listen to Shio and his freaking tunes because maybe I can come up with something better that might be able to wipe the floor with his face. The more I listen to him, the more I'm giving him wins. So I should probably stop doing that. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, we've got some more stuff coming this Friday. And stay tuned for next week's Tuesday video while we come back to a very exciting Tuesday race that I'm hosting. So stay tuned for all of that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.